Okay, build update for the M2. So aggressive. TS splitter on, we've got our TS racing brake duct. We go to the track. Door bars, amazing. Hello. We've got our aero catches, which are lovely. We've seen them already, but here you go again. Underneath here, we've also got the Drexler differential to put in. Carbon roof. It's extremely strong. Ooh. It's gonna be sweet. <laughs> You're driving. <laughs> Welcome to German Auto Works, where in just five weeks, we took a stock M2 to this beast of a race car. We've got seven weeks to complete this project, so if you want to see how we took it from this to this, stay tuned. I'm just working on the fire extinguisher system in the engine bay. Uh, we're making sure that we've got four places to extinguish any fires, and they're all in the important places around the turbo area and the intake area. So we've done kind of like a full lap here. Um, just need to finish off putting in this P-clip and then that will be done and then we'll build up the engine bay area. Later on today, we're gonna to be putting on our carbon roof uh, and we'll give you a demo or we'll give you a look at the inside of the car with the dash in and the steering wheel looking mint. Okay, build update for the M2. We're gonna start at the front end. So we've got our CS splitter on, we've got our CS racing brake ducts, we've got our aero catches, which are lovely. We've seen them already, but here you go again. Underneath here, we've been working on the fire extinguisher system. We've got four points, four nozzles in the engine bay, all the way around, two for the turbos, two for the electrical areas, uh, maximum safety. Moving on to the inside of the car, you will see that we've installed our centre console. We've got our start button, our fire extinguisher button, and our electrical cutoff button all in and all wired. We're still yet to put our parking release in. That's coming. We've got our uh, foot plates in here. So one for the driver, one for the passenger. They are different uh, because the passenger obviously doesn't need to press the throttle pedal. Um, you'll see here, carbon roof. Looking really nice, bonded and bolted in. This is a genuine roof, real nice stuff, love it. Went in easy, just fits absolutely perfect. Uh, moving on to the driver's side, obviously the party piece is less steering wheel. Looks lovely, it's in there. Um, do a quick demonstration of getting it out. So what we've done, we had uh, Levels Motorsport in the UK build us this loom, which we mentioned before, so all we have to do just twist off there, that comes off. Steering wheel comes out, easy as that. Um, sometimes you have some electrical connectors inside here. Yes, that is nice, but quite easy to bend up. So nice and easy, we just plop that in and away you go. You're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the back of the car, we've done a few things. We've got the boot lid on, and I've put in the CarTech isolator in the back here, nice and tucked away. Um, we're running the standard battery at the moment because we're waiting for a few people to come back with prices on a lightweight battery. Um, it's not the end of the world if it runs the original, but if you're going for a lightweight car, then it calls for a lightweight battery. So a few things left to do on the list is to 
finished wiring up our AIM MXG, it's at the moment it's just placed in there. Um, we're going to finish off a few areas down here with the dash. Uh, we've still got our windows to put in, our doors to hang, our trims. Once we have these windows in, we're going to be using the OEM trims. It's going to look really nice. Uh, windscreen is going to be going in on Wednesday, which is a couple days from now. We're just waiting for a few things to kind of come together and this build is going to look almost done. So we're really excited. We've also got the Drexler differential to put in before we go to the track. Um, we've got some wheels coming as well. At the moment we're running the fin speeds, but we are going to be using the forge line wheels that are coming. We're just waiting for the slicks to be mounted. Uh, and yeah, then we're going to hit the track. I can't wait. It's going to be sweet. Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Today, we're doing some coding. Obviously, uh, a lot of control units we've taken out of the car and we've got rid of the wiring, so we're gonna have to use a coding program called ESYS to actually get rid of all of the coding for the car. Um, things like the rear diff uh, control unit we're gonna be getting rid of. Uh, and then we're actually going to be changing the coding of some control units that have stayed, like the airbag module. We've taken airbags out of the car, so we're going to code that module to say that they're not there anymore. Um, and, and all of this is to achieve no warnings on the iDrive screen and the car to run as it should without the things that it needs. So yeah, yesterday we made some progress. We got our rear quarter windows in on the car uh, and we kind of just tidied up things inside we made a bracket for our gearbox manual release which I'll explain later um, so yeah it's, uh, it's, it's going well so here at German Auto Works we try to achieve the best product possible and we take extra time to try and get things to fit how I personally would be really happy with them and I'm really happy with this so we have here our dash fitted to the car and as you can see We've cut it around the roll bar and then we've made this carbon piece here which has allowed us to cap off the areas in which you would see once the windscreen goes in in just a few minutes. Um, now a lot of people, even including factory cars, we went to the track the other day and factory cars, they seem to not really care about this sort of detail. They, they kind of just cut a square and then they plonk a bit of plastic over the top. Not my cup of tea. Um, so, have a look at how this fits. I'm really happy with it. Um, it is extremely difficult to do. You have to take the dash in and out a million times at different stages in the build to get it to fit. So, it does take extra time, but overall it looks so much better and I'm really happy with it. So, what we're going to do to finish these pieces off, is we're just going to run a small bead of uh, sealant down here just to kind of join the two parts together uh, and then the windscreen is going to be going on. Yeah yeah motherfucker! Door bars, amazing! <clears throat> if you actually come and look at it from top down you can see that the door bars are bent to fit in there snug lovely lovely hey hey we doing getting in the driver's seat mate what's it look like <laughs> we're doing i'm getting in mate right so this is uh the new seat position oh my foot that really hurts all right let's bomb this mm -hmm. Race car. Bomb, bomb this race car. Bond the Now I'm gonna do this without getting it on my back. Under here. Oh come on, it's heavy. Ready? ready? No. Yeah, I'm ready. Sure. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh yeah. Oh, so nice. Right now, I've got to not get my back on the back. I don't get it on your back. Um, I've just realised that we bonded on the windows last night without using my special tape. So you will see special tape in this episode. What special tape? Window tape for literally holding in windows once you bond them. Oh, what, your uh, your blue tape? No, not blue tape, mate. What? 
I've got special tape, mate. You've got special tape? Special tape. It was like 40 quid. 40 quid? BMW, I don't know if it's that much, but it's probably only 10 quid. What's that? Who's Tessa? Is that special? Who's Tessa? Yeah, it's Tessa. It's Tessa. That is, the, that is the wind's... If you've worked in the dealership, you'll know. Tessa. <laughs> you'll also know that if you've been in motorsport, Tiger Seal is the only bond you'll ever need. You don't need anything else in your life other than Tiger Seal. Mm. Everything else is just rebranded Tiger Seal. Let's all be honest. Yeah. Uh, imagine that. You'd be pissed. <laughs> your special tape. Oh, let me just... Shit. So aggressive. Oh, I'm, I'm dizzy. I need food. So aggressive. Right. This tape is designed to hold up windscreens. So, benefits of it, it's extremely strong. Ooh. But, it leaves no residue when it comes off. If we can put it on there, it just comes straight off, no residue. So it's perfect for bonding in glass, windscreens, rear screens, whatever. Uh, it's made by Tessa, I ordered it from BMW. Uh, I'll get the part number for you. <coughs> All right, there you go. So if you want this tape, there's the part number. Thank me in the comments section. And like the video, mate, because you know it's gonna help us out. You know what I mean? I'm helping you, you help me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the rear windscreen that we are using. It's made by a company called ACW. Link is in the description. Um, really good company based in Oxford area, I think. I've used them loads. They are hard coated. Now when you're choosing your plastic windows, you want to go for the hard coated. As soon as you touch them with a the microfiber, if they're not hard coated, they scratch. And usually what happens is someone will put them on, first thing they want to do is wipe it and they scratch it. So you don't want to do that. Go for the hard coated. Uh, you get these really nice black borders around like the original would be, but obviously this is made of uh, <laughs> plastic. No. Made of polycarbonate, I think. <laughs> Definitely polycarbonate. Right, what are we going to do, Shit. <laughs> Buffeting. Yeah. Plonk it on and then we'll move it around. Oh. That's there, it's so much better. Hold her up. Now we'll get the positioning right, so we'll measure either side. We're down here at Apex once again to test out our car that we built last time, which is really nice for us. We can get back in it and enjoy it for the day. And here she is, obviously M3 V8. It's had the German Auto Works treatment. We really love it. That's us finished down at Apex for today, and I can say this is probably one of the best track days I've ever had. This car is absolutely amazing in the hot temperatures and on this track. The curbs are so smooth, we were killing it out there. We are back from the track, and that was the most epic day in the E92. Absolutely loved every second of it. But we're back on the M2 build now, and we have our diffs in front of us here. So on the right, we've got the standard diff. On the left, we have our Drexler. Now, people sometimes are not sure what diffs to go with. Um, people want maybe a Quave, maybe a Wave Track. But I'm telling you now, a Drexler is what you want. Um, the reason for it is the way that it's composed, the way that it works is at the top of everyone's game. 
BMW Motorsports use them in all of their cars. You can buy these from the factory, you can also have them installed like we did. The benefit of having them installed is that you can actually set the ramp angles up to the way that you want the diff to react. Now this has been set up for track, but it's not the highest of aggression, it's kind of like one step down, so it's also good for the road as well. You can see here that it's been done by our friend uh, Dave in the, in the UK, it's uh, Heisman Differentials. I work with Dave very closely, I very much recommend him for any type of diff work, even if it's just for OEM stuff, hit him up. I've got a link in the description to his website. Um, I wouldn't go to anybody else and I wouldn't trust anybody else. So you can see here the differences in the diff is that this one has the servo motor, whereas this one does not. This is a reactive diff. This reacts to what the wheel speed sensors are sensing. So if you have a wheel slip, the uh, wheel speed sensor will pick up a differential between the left and the right. Then a computer will work out how much uh, voltage to apply to the motor, which will then transfer to how much lock you'll have on the diff. Now that whole process takes time. This diff is proactive. It works instantly. As soon as there's a differential, the way the mechanics work inside, you are locking that diff up. There is a massive difference with these diffs compared to the stock OEM ones. If you do have a wave track or a quay fitted to your car and you accelerate down the road and you find that it's going left, right, left, right, buy one of these. <laughs> you won't regret it. So with the diff now in this position, we have to do a few things beforehand. We're gonna to need to throw some Loctite down on this locking nut here. Very important that a strong Loctite is used for that. We're then gonna fill the diff with the oil. It's transported without oil. So we're gonna pop these out. We'll pop the uh, drain plug out. We'll pop the fill plug out and we will fill it up and get it in the car. Hello. Oh, he hasn't taken the cap off. I've taken the cap off, right? Oh, Joe! Alright everybody, so this is the first little drive of the car after we finished it, well not finished quite, but uh, we got it driving, so we're going to take it over to get re-cleared, um, so essentially this is the first time it's driven with all the steering wheel and the dash, we still have a little bit of coding to do on the screen there, so uh, but yeah this is just to see that it actually still does drive, which it does. <laughs> So sick. And uh, yeah, this is this is what we're looking like. Steering wheel's feeling nice. Dash is looking good. Seat and position's lovely. We're really excited. And it sounds absolutely amazing. Just got a few coaches in the way here. Oh, Joe, she's looking good. She is. She's looking good. If I can focus on it. She's out when she's out. Yeah, pumping, pump of gas. <laughs> Oh,
The next episode will be our final instalment of this M2 build series. We'll be taking the car through the canyons of Arizona and of course down to Apex Motor Club to put the car well and truly through its paces. We'll also be weighing the car to see how much weight we removed. Catch you next time. Thank you for your support. A lot of our video viewers are not yet subscribers, so please, if you like this content, like and subscribe. Catch you next time.